Hi there, and happy Thanksgiving. I'm Danny Gregory. This is Draw With Me. You've just seen a parade of beautiful robots. I was pretty impressed by those robots. That uh, Those are ones that you guys made over the last week, and uh, they were really great, really beautiful, really expressive, hilarious, and diverse. So thanks for making those, and thanks for joining me today. I imagine that, um, you know, some of you may not be in your f regular places. Maybe you've gone somewhere for Thanksgiving. Maybe you're standing in the kitchen watching this on in the background while you stir your gravy. But, yes, this is the 150th episode of Draw With Me. Kind of extraordinary, right? 150 episodes. How long have we been doing this? Mm, two and a half years. So it's been a lot, a lot, a lot of times we've spent together. 150 hours. How many days is that? I don't know. It's like it's as if we spent like went on vacation together and were together night and day drawing. Well, that sounds like fun, but that's not actually what happened. We met every Thursday and we drew. That's really good. 150 times. That is certainly a habit now, right? So I, and I see so many of you, um, so many familiar names, which means that you guys have joined me week after week. And I'm certainly grateful for that. So thank you. Thank you all for, for being here, for joining me for this 150th episode, despite the fact that it's Thanksgiving. All the more reason to draw together. Um, what else? I also want to tell you about, I mentioned to you last time, 100,000 subscribers to our YouTube channel. Again, I'm tired, I'm sorry to talk about me and sketchbook school rather than you, but you're one of those subscribers, I hope. And so therefore you've helped to, to get us over this threshold. What does it mean? I don't know, honestly, but we did look, we just got this kind of cool, right? This is a plaque that YouTube sent us present, especially like engraved it's metal, it's mirror. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. So we will have to display that. Just arrived. And uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. So yeah, so this has been a week of milestones. And more reasons to be grateful. That's what I want to talk about this week. I want to talk about being grateful, about gratitude, you know, about, about, even though this has been a lousy year in many regards, you know, there's all kinds of disappointments that we've had. We've had to deal with this infernal pandemic. It's been tough. We thought, I mean, I remember saying this to myself on New Year's Eve 2020. Thank God the 2020 is over. Now we can go into 2021. Yeah, not so much. And now things are getting worse in Europe. It's tough. I'm really... Uh, Sad and disappointed by that, but there's still lots of reasons to be grateful. Lots of things that have been good, and things that I want to talk about today. I want us to explore today. So the idea for today's um, drawing exercise is going to be to make a little gratitude page. It could be a page in your sketchbook. Um, it could be. I'm actually going to be doing it here on these Hanamula watercolor postcards. Nice postcards, watercolor paper. So, yeah, so I'm going to be doing it um, there on this watercolor paper because I had this idea. I wanted, I've, I've had these watercolor postcards around for a while and I haven't found a perfect idea for who to send them to because it's so nice to have a watercolor postcard. I don't know if you ever made one, but it's like, it's it's nice card stock, it's watercolor paper, you do a drawing and you send it off. And um, grateful when you're traveling too, by the way, just take them with you. Why, you know, what a great way to send a souvenir to somebody that you've been traveling, that you uh, have missed. But I've decided that I, I've been thinking, who am I gonna send this to? And I've decided to send it to myself. I don't get enough mail, but no. What I thought I would do is today I want to think about what I'm grateful for. In fact, I wrote an essay this morning that I sent out to those of you who subscribe to my essays. Hopefully that's you. 
Um, and, I, and I wrote about what I was grateful for this year. So today I want to draw a bit about that. But I also thought, you know, I saw, I mentioned in this essay that I saw this sign outside of a church. In fact, we just saw it this morning when we went to pick up some stuff for dinner. Um, and it was a sign outside of a church that said, um, what did it say? It said, make Thanksgiving into thanks living. A little hokey, but I thought that's a nice idea. Thanks living, the idea that like, why not be gratitude, have gratitude be part of your every day. Be grateful all the time for the things that we have. You know, I don't want to be too Pollyanna. I don't want to be too kind of goobery that way. But I do think that it's important to recognize what we have, you know, because we are lucky. We're all lucky in some in different ways. So I thought I'll make this postcard today and I'll mail it to myself because probably there's no, there's no mail today, obviously. So maybe the postman will come tomorrow and maybe I'll get it on Monday. So it'll be a reminder to me that yes, I'm still have a lot of things to be grateful for, in case I've forgotten by Monday. So yes, a lot of you um, got my my essay and wrote back to me. It was so nice. I love when I send out an essay and then people write back to me and they just reply to the email and send it back to me. And so many people um, told me about the things that they're grateful for and um, that they're grateful for getting the essay. They're grateful for draw with me. And that makes, makes me happy too. So it's all good. All right. Let's begin and get some stuff. Get some stuff. Get whatever supplies you want, whatever you feel like working with. As I said, I'm going to work on this. This is watercolor paper. So I'm going to work in a bunch of different media. I think I'm going to work with. I'm going to work with watercolor markers. I might work with a bit of watercolor. I'm not sure. Uh, and I will work with watercolor pencils because that's the mood I'm in. And then maybe some ink, all kinds of stuff. So let's start. What are you grateful for? I'm going to start with something that I need to say every day, which is that I am grateful for my wife. My wife is... is uh, not sure if she's watching. She might be. But um, but she knows that I'm grateful for her. So I'm going to do a drawing that she may not be grateful I did. I really do good drawings of her. Because she, it's hard to capture her beauty. Honestly. Um, but yeah. So she has beautiful blue eyes. I'm grateful for those. I'm going to make them really far, set far apart so that they look a little bit. I'm going to stop apologizing, okay? I'm going to stop apologizing for my drawing. I think that that's a good idea. There's nothing to apologize for. Don't apologize for your art. Just make it and shut up. I'm certainly grateful for my pencil sharpener. It's coming very useful. I like this pencil. This is like a special pencil. Where is it? Here, it's a pencil sharpener that I, great, that I use for, uh, it's special for colored pencils. Because colored pencils don't have graphite and then they have whatever this stuff is. And uh, it helps to have a better kind of sharpener, special colored pencil sharpener. I didn't even know such a thing existed. That's one of the things I learned about this year was colored pencil sharpeners. Glad to have that. here all right well I'm glad that she, I'm what I'm grateful that she's not upset she, she does of course gets upset like all of us but she might get more upset when she sees this drawing no I'm not apologizing for my drawings just remembered I'm not apologizing for it so anyway 
that will have to be a stand-in for her. And I think I'm going to use a pen to write to write that, just in case I can't later identify her. All right, so I'm grateful for, for Jenny. And then I'm also grateful for my dog, Twiglet. The one who chewed that pencil. <laughs> yes, there's a little bit of complaining going on in the peanut gallery. Twiglet. Twiglet has lots of names now. Twiglet, shortened to Twiggy. Puggy. Beefy. She's been known as Beefy kind of since the beginning. Beefy, because she is kind of, oh, and now she's scratching at the door. I hear her there. Scratching at the door. Beefy. She's quite, she's like a, she's like basically like a cinder block. She's not really fat, but she is sort of like a cinder block of a dog. And uh, I have to give her some, some little wrinkles. She's a very expressive face considering how wrinkly she is, but... All right, so that's going to be... Twiggy. All right, what next? Um, you know, here's a weird thing to be grateful for. I'm going to be grateful for a Nissan van. What? Yes. So, my son Jack and his girlfriend Amanda... Bought this van at the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, they did all this work on it to make it really cool. And they, they drive around in it and they go camping in it. In fact, they are with Amanda's family right now. Thanksgiving. And it's really just, it's been a life changer for them in so many ways, you know, to have this van that allows them to get out into nature, to explore. Uh, they are about to go on, I think it's a three week trip to Mexico. They both work in the movie and the TV business. And uh, so they can periodically, they work really ridiculously hard and ridiculously long hours. But they're going to take off and go to Mexico for Christmas. They're going to stop here on the way. So we'll get to see them first. But So yeah, so that van is something that I'm grateful for, something that they have. Um, and it has been good for them. All right, so that's the van. What else do I want to draw? Um... You know what? I gotta say, I am grateful for art. I hope you are too. I hope you art too. So I'm gonna draw my sketchbook. I'm gonna draw just a little pen. should do it with watercolor pencil. I'm not really using this watercolor paper to good effect, but I will come back and I will improve that somehow. So yeah, so, I mean, art has always been so valuable to me, but this year 
having art as a way of of expressing myself, of exploring my emotions, of dealing with stress. I mean, all the things that that art can give you. Talking about art, obviously my whole job right now is art, which is fantastic. And I'm really lucky about that. So, yeah, so art is definitely something that I'm grateful for. Um, you know what? In, in a related matter, I think I'm going to say that I am grateful for this, for Draw With Me. Yeah. So I'm going to make this sort of the Draw With Me guy. Look at what he looks like. See, I draw him every week. You'd think I'd know by now what he looks like. But that's basically him. And, uh, yeah, so Draw With Me is definitely something that I am grateful for. I mean, it's been, it's so nice to know every week I get to come hang out with you guys. I get to focus on drawing. I get to talk about ideas a bit, you know, and just like work on the habit of drawing. I hope that's what you get out of it too. Just to say, you know what, drawing, it doesn't have to be a big deal. It doesn't have to be um, art with a capital A. Although here I did make a, a with a capital, art with a capital A. But anyway. Despite that, um, I'm also going to talk about my essays as another thing that I, I mean, boy, I, uh, this is sort of going to represent my essays is just this sort of generic page of writing, um, which actually I don't do on a piece of paper. I do, um, but I've done, I've, I've been doing these now for also for quite a long time. So I've probably done a hundred of these, maybe. I have to count. I don't know. So I'm going to say Danny's essays. Another thing that I'm grateful for. Because honestly, for many years I kept a blog. Perhaps you know about that. Um, I blogged irregularly, sometimes regularly. But I would write my ideas down. And I... I kind of forgot how much, how important that was to me, to be able to have a place to go and write on a regular basis and to feel like a writer again, you know? I just haven't, I haven't really felt that way. I haven't written a book in a couple of years. I haven't felt that feeling. And so now suddenly that's come back to me thanks to writing these essays. I have a purpose, a reason to write and a focus and that's been great, you know? So that's really good. Um, what else am I grateful for? Boy, there's so many things. You know what? I'm going to say, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm typically sort of a hypochondriac. And I have to say, I, and I've had a health scare or two over time, but I am going to say that this year I have really, and maybe it's because of COVID, but I've really decided that I have to make my health a priority. It's just because I'm becoming old and decrepit and my health is perhaps more of an issue than it was before. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my body as something that I am grateful for. Um, and so my body has, despite the fact that I haven't really done, done what I should for it, my brain hasn't done what, for my body what it should, um, I'm this year, increasingly I am making an effort to be healthier, to get to exercise, to go to the doctor and the dentist and all that kind of stuff more often. So, and it's it's paid off, um, and I just feel better. So I would say being healthy, or I would say my body. My body is something I am grateful for, despite the fact that it is. I've been using it for an awfully long time. I'm still, I still like it. I still think it's good. I still think it's good. And, and I've decided to no longer be scared of it. Because there certainly have been times in my life when I was just scared of my body. I just felt like, like it was going to let me down. It was going to, it was going to, you know, end my life prematurely. But I've come to realize that it's not my body's fault. It's not really anybody's fault. But, you know, it's just something you have to put a bit of effort into. So that is what I'm doing with myself. Okay, um, another thing, 
this year we got it we got a new car I haven't really I've only ever had one new car before but I really like this car and it is you know super gizmo-y kind of car and it is fun to drive and here in Phoenix we just have to have a car in New York where I used to live a car was definitely a handicap but here it's a necessity so my car is something I'm grateful for um, I really like having it and I'm grateful for it so I'm gonna add my car to my list thank you car Uh, what else? Uh, you know what? This is going to sound a, perhaps a bit strange, but I'm grateful for technology. I mean, I'm really grateful for technology. I love technology, but man, this year, what would this year have been like without our computers, our cameras? I mean, it's, I mean, it would have been the Middle Ages. I mean, probably quite literally it would have been the Middle Ages, but yeah, I mean, life without Zoom, life without Netflix, life without, I don't know, the ability to do what we're doing right now, to watch YouTube, to, um, you know, to be connected to each other, to be connected to information, uh, you know, and I love many aspects of technology. I like my phone, I like my Kindle. I like my very, I have lots of computers. I really love all of them. I have lots of cameras. It's, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have my job without computers. You know, and I think a lot, of, I think also, here's the thing. I've always loved computers, but most people don't. Most people are like, oh, technology is, uh, you know, it's making life worse. I violently disagree, not violently, adamantly disagree with that. I think that technology is uh, really important. And I think this year and last year, we've all come to really value it and to understand it. And, I, I, you know, I've been reading an amazing book um, that is, that maybe I'll, I'll drop the name of into the notes below, which is about the incredible convergence of technology and how, the next few years are going to be the most significant in human history because of all the convergence of technology and all the ways it's going to change everything about our lives, including art. You know, I think that there's a lot of aspects of art that are affected by technology, from things like the iPad and Procreate, but also to the way that artists are going to get paid and the way that we can share art and so many other things. So I think technology is grand, and I'm grateful for it. Okay, um, so technology is another thing. I'm also going to talk about, I'm grateful for where I live. You know, I lived in New York for so many years, I couldn't imagine living in a place like Phoenix, which we moved to sort of by accident. You probably know the story by now if you've been watching Draw With Me, how we kind of got stuck out here. And, uh, you know, but it is a beautiful place, Phoenix. It is, the desert is amazing. I love the weather here. Um, we've been meeting people finally. And there's just been a lot of things that are just really great here. I mean, I love the weather, even when it's insanely hot, because it reminds me of when I was a kid. When I was a kid and I lived in Pakistan, it wasn't quite as hot as it is here, but it's this place just reminds me of growing up with my living with my grandparents and the smells and the sounds of the birds and a lot of the plants that grow here they just remind me of all that so I'm really grateful and I just wrote Pakistan but I meant to say Phoenix yes Phoenix Phoenix is is now my kind of place very different from New York not the kind of place I would have thought I would like you know but sometimes I mean that's another lesson in this whole thing which is you, you know, you don't always know what you're going to be grateful for. You don't always know what you're going to like in life. You got to just see what happens and go with it. And that's kind of been my process is I've been, you know, we, we ended up out here through no 
planning or doing of our own, and yet it all worked out. It was okay. It's good, you know? So that's another part of the lessons that I've been learning is, um, is trying to see the positive even in these strange things that come up, come about. Um, another thing that I've also grown really appreciative of and aware of here is nature. The nature in New York is, you know, also around, but, but, you know, trapped between big buildings perhaps, and we lived right on the edge of Washington Square Parks, so there was, you know, we were surrounded by nature, but in a different way. Here, nature is grand and big, and there are just so, it's teeming. We have so many birds in our backyard, hummingbirds, hawks, owls, mockingbirds, pig, doves, not pigeons, actually doves, um, quail. It just goes on and on. The birds, there are coyotes, there are rattlesnakes, there are black widow spiders and tarantulas, there are scorpions, all kind of scary, but also really pretty cool. And, and I, that's another thing that I've been thinking a lot about since the pandemic began, which is the power of nature and how we are Ultimately, we are, I was going to say victims, but we're not. We are subject to nature. The pandemic is nature. And we think of humankind as somehow transcending nature, you know, that we have this power to control everything. But of course, we're seeing with climate change, we're seeing all these ways in which nature still is incredibly powerful, incredibly fascinating and diverse and creative and amazing. So... Um, I just, I'm just going to draw some kind of a bird. I don't know what kind of bird it's going to turn out to be. But yeah. John Muir's Law is an incredible artist. If you aren't aware of him, um, look him up. He is now teaching for us on Spark. And he is just an incredible um, nature journalist, but also somebody who understand so much about how nature works, how our own nature works, how, and how to create nature in your, in your sketchbook, how to represent it. I think we've all learned a huge amount from him, those of us who have been studying with him in, in Spark. And um, he's, he's another, another thing I'm grateful for, is having become friends with him and having him be part of our community. Just, I mean, to listen to him talk about how birds' feathers work, how birds' skeleton works, how they behave, how they see the world. Just make sure. So, this is just the first one. I might make a series of these. I might make a series of these. Um, you know, and I could, uh, I could do a little bit more with this, couldn't I? Home. Our car and this van are both white. In Phoenix, that's kind of the way things are, although my son lives in Los Angeles. But um, we have white vehicles because it keeps them a little bit cooler. Because it is, it is damn hot here. But. So anyway, so I hope that you've... Uh, You've been able to work a little bit on your your gratitude journal. You know, I think I think it could be nice to have a sketchbook that's just devoted to this practice. Just like what 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 good happened today. You know, and when you when you stop and you say, I'm going to make art about it, you contemplate it, you think about it. You know, you appreciate it all the more, I believe, because you've done that. And, um, you know, you, you're, you're just, it's just a more profound experience. And that's, it's really the reason that I started making art. We were talking about that in Spark this week about, um, we had this thing called Healing Sketchbook. And David Elliott, who's an art therapist, was talking about 
about the idea of contemplating something that an object that means a lot to you and through drawing it and writing about it you have a deeper appreciation and and a, a sort of a connection to it and that's one of the things that art of course gives us is this ability to to go deeper with our understanding to go deeper with um our memories all those kinds of things so yes um Uh, I'm going to let you do this for a minute or two. Carry on a little bit with your, with your, um, with your drawing. Let me just look at it that way. Um, but see, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to write on the back of this postcard. I'm going to write a note to myself, and then I'm going to mail it to me, as I mentioned. And uh, you know, it'll be interesting to get it in a few days. And I kind of like the idea that it'll go through the mail. It won't be pristine. It'll be kind of beaten up by the mail, you know, by the handling of it. And that's kind of part of the fun of it. That's part of the thing that makes mail cool is the analog part of it, right? It was, you know, I could take a picture of this and email it to myself, I suppose. It's funny, actually, talking about writing to yourself. Um, I remember a long time ago, there was an email service. I don't know if it exists anymore. Future Me, was it called? I want to say Future Me. And the idea of it was that you could write an email to yourself and then it would get sent to you at some, at some distant point in the future. It, and you could say, I want to send this to me in a year, maybe even longer. And then suddenly you'd get an email from you that was written from this past version of you. And it was like fascinating to see what was on your mind at the time you know, um, like a time capsule. And I have always, I always write notes to myself. And in fact, on uh, Evernote, which is like a application that I use to store all the stuff that I write and every, I mean, it's enormous. I have thousands and thousands of files in it. But one s folder of it is called Notes to Self. And earlier this week, I was kind of going through Evernote and I was cleaning it up. And I'd totally forgotten about Notes to Self. And I went in and I found some notes that I had written to myself in 2013. 2013 was a big year for me because 2013 was the year that I, I left my career in advertising. I quit my job and I, um, Jenny and I moved to California and I wrote Art Before Breakfast and various other things happened. But it was a really big deal. I mean, I quit this pretty successful career that I was having to do, I don't know what the hell I was doing. I honestly didn't have any plan, didn't know what I was going to do, but I took this leap. And I wrote an awful lot of notes to self during that period, pros and cons, why I should be doing this, what will happen, what's the worst case scenario. I wrote like little essays about like, what will a perfect day be like when I'm in this new life? What will it be like? Like, what will I do? And writing down like what I did from when I woke up in the morning to when I went to bed at night, all the things that I imagined I would be doing, just a lot of notes to self. So I went back and I looked at all those, and it's just so interesting to see. Here it is, what, uh, eight, nine years later, eight years later, um, and just like I had, obviously I couldn't have foreseen what my life would be like and couldn't foresee things like sketchbook school, the pandemic, uh, you know, cancer, all these various things that have happened to me. So all the things that I was worried about, those aren't the kinds of things that happened. Other things happened, you know. Some of the things that I thought I was going to worry about did happen, but other things didn't happen or they happened in a totally different way. But just when you have this insight into yourself about this, you know, the things that you worry about, the things you're concerned about, the things that you value, and then you get to say, huh, what am I worried about now? What matters to me now? Maybe by having this kind of broader macrocosmic view of myself, I can say, you know what? Maybe I don't need to worry about this stuff so much. Maybe the things that really matter are the things that I appreciate. So maybe I should spend a bit more time counting my blessings. Um, Betsy points out that postcards cost, six by nine postcards cost the same small. Ones. This is a small, this postcard is actually kind of small. 
it's 4.1 by 5.8. It's a smaller, smaller than the big kind. But yeah, postcard, I mean, the mail's pretty cheap. It's pretty cheap considering if you think about what happens. I mean, literally, I put a letter in my mailbox here. Mailman picks it up and delivers it. Now, in this case, he's just going to turn around and bring it back here. He's probably going to pick it up and go, what the hell? He's sending a letter to himself? You know what I've been doing recently that I've been really, really valuing is I've been writing letters to my son every week. Um, a lot of them about his mom, trying to tell him about his mom, who's you know been gone now for a long time, and uh, just trying to recollect what she was like and what our life was like together. And writing letters longhand on sheets of paper with a pen has been... I don't know. It's been the way to do it. I can tell you that. If I'd sent him emails or sent him texts or made him videos, no. Writing a letter and sending it to him is the way, I think, to communicate emotion and thoughtfulness and for him to be able to sit down when he's ready to and to sit down and read a letter is a really different experience than bong, it pops up on your phone. I don't do it enough. I should do it more. Um... All right, so Chris says he writes a letter to his dad every day. That is so nice. That is really nice. I like that so much. wish my son did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let us now, you know what I want to do? I want to share, I want, I was, we have a workshop coming up, and I want to, and it is, um, I think it's going to be a great workshop with Ian Fennelly, who we've done workshops with before. I just love Ian. And I, so I wanted to take, and so this is about, this workshop is about him in Liverpool. So this week, you know, every week we show, we do a sketchbook tour. This week's sketchbook tour is going to be Ian, and it's going to be special because uh, he's going to narrate it and he's going to tell us about it. So it's his sketchbook of Liverpool and all the places that he loves and is grateful for and appreciates about his hometown. Really inspiring. And that, by the way, is uh, is what this workshop is going to be about. So, oh, yes. We've just dropped the address. And if you want to send us snail mail, we'll take it. We would really appreciate it. That would be great. So there's our post office box. It's also in the chat. but uh, Or do a screen grab. Let me put it up again. Do a screen grab and you can uh, send it to us. So, all right. Um, so let me just share with you the sketchbook tour of the week. It's a little bit longer than normal because Ian is going to tell us about, about his sketchbook. And then uh, we will come back. Okay, here we go. So once upon a time, there was a sketchbook. And this is my Liverpool sketchbook which I've had now for quite some time. I've been working on this probably for about a year or so, and these are all the drawings that I do around Liverpool. This is the sketchbook that I take with me. And the first one here is Chinatown, which is a drawing of the oldest Chinese community in, in Europe. And this was done in the bowels of winter when it was really, really cold. And then moving on, we have a sketch of the Albert Dock. This one's really quite important for, for me because this one kind of helped me move forward in terms of how you kind of structure a picture. So I started off with this bright, bright red life boy and then put this yellow ochre wash behind. And it really kind of showed me how with a, a really simple bit of painting, thick and then watery and, and washy, you can kind of really start to create depth in the picture. And also it gives you a really strong hook in in terms of the composition. And then the next one we have is Matthew Streets, which is all about drawing people without putting the people in because they never keep still. But it's got all the references to people. It's got all the street furniture and the windows and the doors. And then this one is Slater Streets in Liverpool. And what's important for me about this one is it kind of shows you that when you're drawing for quite some time, the more you see, the more you understand, the more you imagine. So with this particular picture, you're sitting there, you're looking at a scene for such a long time, 
And after a while, you really start noticing what's going on. So it took me a while to realize how many satellite dishes there were in this picture. And then you start kind of imagining that this could be the street in Liverpool where the satellite dishes grow. And when they've grown, they take off, they float up into the air, and then they turn into clouds. And then the clouds become really important because what they do is they occupy this space, they fill this space here. So they create that relationship between here and here, which is really important for the composition, but also to let the picture breathe. And then moving on, we have the Blue Coat Gallery, which was done with the aid of the rain, because as I was drawing this, it was pouring down with rain, so all the splashes of rain came down, and they hit the paint, and they bounced off, and they landed around here. So this is really urban sketching, and use the elements in your favour. This is Rodney Street in Liverpool, and here we have the Anglican Cathedral. And we're very lucky in Liverpool we have two cathedrals, this is the big one. What's great about urban sketching when you're drawing on location, you remember how you felt the feelings that, that you kind of went through. And I look at this picture and all I think about is a stiff neck, aching neck, because I spent two and a half hours just looking up all the time. So every time I see these, these colours, I just think stiff neck. And that's really important. It's all about the human experience of actually creating these pictures and all these things remind you of how you felt. This is the Liver Buildings. This is the most famous building in Liverpool. And on top of the Liver Buildings, we have two Liver Birds. We have this one up here, which is the girl, that's the female one. And she's looking out to see the River Mersey's over on this side. And apparently, rumour has it that she's waiting for the sailors to come in. And then this guy here, he's the boy one, he's the bloke. And he's looking into the city and he's waiting for the pubs to open. But that's apparently what they say. But in terms of this picture, what was really important was just to get a composition going. Now this picture, this image by itself, although it's a really iconic building, sitting by itself without the statue, it just wouldn't have worked for me. So it was really important to get the right kind of angle. And then it becomes about the relationship between this statue and this building, which then gives you depth and gives you visual interest and gives you all sorts of kind of tonal contrast. So that's really, really important picking the right spot, not just focusing on the one iconic building by itself, but letting the whole picture work. This is Hope Street, and this is looking towards our other cathedral, which is the Catholic Cathedral. And the two cathedrals are connected by this amazing street called Hope Street. This is Abercrombie Square in Liverpool. This is going into the Albert Dock now, and this is the Pump House, and then this is the really kind of modern museum of Liverpool life. And I'm kind of drawn towards cobbles. If I see cobbles, I've got to stop, I've got to draw them, I've got to try and tweak them into the picture. Because visually, they're just so interesting. They're great fun to draw, but also it helps people to connect with your picture, because they can imagine themselves walking along here, popping into the Pump House for a pint, because it's a pub now, Nipping around the corner and going into the museum. So it's all about enabling people to relate to your pictures. And that's often how I choose compositions. This is an interior. I don't often do interiors because I like to be outside. But this is the Victoria building. And this is this, I suppose this is more of an exercise in, in perspective, line work, shape. But that just gave me a headache. Needs a bit of colour. This is the World Museum. This was done in the bowels of winter, absolutely freezing cold. So I've used lots and lots of orange here to give myself a bit of a lift. The orange is like an extra layer of clothing for me. This is St George's Hall. This was tricky because I was right on the edge of a really, really busy road, getting in loads of people's way, getting hassled by people coming past, getting honked at by bus buses, really kind of living on the edge, extreme urban sketching. So I won't do that again. But sometimes we have to suffer for our hours. I wanted just the right angle, so I had to be in a really kind of busy spot. This is the Liverpool Philharmonic. 
This is our kind of famous concert hall in Liverpool. So with this one, the starting point was just writing at Liverpool Philharmonic, getting that fitted in with a pen, drawing all of that, painting around it, and the whole composition is structured around that. So the important thing is getting those that in, getting the Liverpool Philharmonic right in, and then everything fits around it. So it's a great way to start a picture, using the lettering as a starting point. This is the Albert Dock, um, down by the waterfront. So this is the colonnade, so you're actually sheltered here, you're inside the dock, kind of looking through the columns into the basin. Again, this was done in the bowels of winter. So I look at this, I just feel cold. I just remember the cold. And this is very much about drawing in paints. So it's drawing the columns, drawing the things around it to give yourself a kind of structure in paint, which you can then use the pen to kind of weave around. This is on um, William Brown Street. So we have the Walker Art Gallery behind the fountain, and then we have the library and the museums here. This is very much about mixing my two favourite colours together, the winds that blew the burnt sienna, to give yourself a nice, solid structure as a starting point. And then this is going back to the colonnades again, starting off with a crane. And sometimes things just jump out at you. You think you see a crane and you see shapes and you see lots of kind of interesting stuff and you think, I've just got to draw that, I've got to paint it. And you paint that and then you think, right, well, I'll start now to begin putting it into the context. So you start then working on things that fit around it. So then before you know it, the whole kind of structure comes together. So when I painted this, it was just the crane and then everything kind of fitted around. And that is my Liverpool sketchbook. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. You see how much we learned just from him giving a sketchbook tour? How many ideas there were in there? He's really, he's really um, a great teacher as well as being a great artist. So, yeah. So, up oh, there it is, gigantic. That is the web. The, um, the workshop is going to be called "Urban Sketching in the Home of the Beatles," and in fact, it's going to be on Matthew Street, which he showed you one of the drawings he's done of Matthew Street which is where the cavern is, which is the where the Beatles first played. Can you imagine people used to like go and see the Beatles like during lunch? You'd go to the cavern, you'd have a pint, you'd have a sausage roll, you'd watch the Beatles, and then you go back to work. Yeah, so that's how that worked. Um, and uh, so that's going to be, this workshop is going to be Ian teaching us, and that's coming up pretty soon. So go to our website. It is when is it? it? Is not this Saturday. It's the Saturday after. Am I right? I'm pretty sure I'm right. So yeah. Um, what else? Would you like one of these? I have a bunch to give away. I do. I have a bunch of um, of these to give away. And if you want one, just write to us info at sketchbookschool.com. Put your mailing address in the email. A lot of people write to us and they don't put their mailing address. So we'll, so then I have to write back to them and say, thanks, I think you won, but you don't have a mailing address. Tell us why you want this. The ones, the people who, it's a random selection that we, when we pick winners, but I have to say the randomness is augmented or is you will ha it is more in your favor if you give us a good reason to give you this Hanamura um, postcard thing. And maybe you'll send us a postcard. That would be nice. Um, so, yes. And unfortunately, we can only do it in the U.S. right now. Um, but Hanamura, by the way, is giving us a lot of good stuff for next year. They just are. They're, they're sponsoring Draw With Me Again in 2022. And they are very generously giving us a lot more stuff to give away. That's stuff to look forward to. But right now, we do have a bunch of these. Want one? Send us an email. Um, I just want to say a couple of other things about some nice comments that I just saw. Um, I wanted to say, Jenny, congratulations on to you on joining us live. Hopefully you've watched it in, uh, in the past. And that is 
that is uh, now you're seeing it live. Good. I hope it's different. I hope it's more exciting and scintillating. Um, what else? Uh, I wanted to echo what Janice says. If you join Spark, you get this workshop for free. So you don't have to pay for it. You just get to go to it. And you also get whatever it is, 20. We do 20 live classes a week just about now. It's kind of insane. Um, I wanted to send out some some uh, thoughts to to Thistle, and I hope that you and your dad are going to be okay. I know that um, I imagine this is, has been very challenging for you, and I just want to know you to know that I'm thinking of you, and uh, I hope you and your dad are going to be okay. Similarly to Elizabeth, um, I also want to say keep making art and keeping strong and. Uh, Keep coming to draw with me. Thank you. And thanks for letting us know a bit about your story. Um, what else? Lisa, Alice's Restaurant. Love that song. It is, I've never really thought of it as the Thanksgiving song, but of course it is. Did you ever see the movie with, that Arlo Guthrie is in? You can see that movie in forever. It's kind of a hilarious movie. And I, I've always loved Arlo Guthrie, and um, that was very cool. So what else? Um, Natalie, yes, we're in Phoenix. We are here in Phoenix. Sometime we've got to, we were just talking about this morning, we've got to do like a get together of Phoenician draw with me and sketchbook school and just general art people. So if any of you have any ideas about that, you all in Phoenix, let me know and we'll figure that out. Deb, Deb is, um, as, well, sorry about that. Deb, is, uh, Deb Green has joined us earlier. I mean, I guess last year you started to draw and you've been taking classes and workshops with us. And that is great. We're so glad to have you. And um, thank you for being part of this. And congratulations on your grandson, who we're hopefully going to meet next year, apparently earlier next year. Deb is Morgan's mother, by the way, for those of you who are wondering. So thank you all for joining me. Thank you for being part of these this draw with me kind of thing that's been going on for a while now and for making it successful. Thank you for doing that and and thank you for I don't know for sharing your art and for sharing your time. Um, have a great Thanksgiving even if you don't celebrate it make today's a great day and let's think about thanks living. Kind of like that idea. So I'll see you again soon. Thanks for drawing with me today. We'd love to see what you made. So please post it on social media or put it in the Sketchbook School schoolyard and make sure to tag it, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. Thanks very much to our sponsors, Hanamula and Windsor and Newton. I'd like some more inspiration for your creativity, here are three things that you can do. One, subscribe to this channel and you'll know when I make new videos, which I do every week. Two, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. A lot of people seem to like it, maybe because it's free. And third, watch another video.